Well, at the very beginning is the introduction to open intelligence. And the introduction is as simple as to stop thinking for a moment. Just to pause your train of thought and identify the intelligence that is looking through your eyes. Identify the alertness by which you know anything at all. And when you stop thinking for a moment, you just pause that need to describe and understand and analyse, then you allow yourself some space to recognise this intelligence. Now it's always been there, <coughs> it's always been the basis of all of your experience. It's just for most of us it's gone unnoticed. So all we're doing here is learning to notice and then to rely on this opening intelligence that is the basis of our experience. And what is absolutely key is this direct instinctive recognition. Because this is what gives us the evidence of the profundity and the efficacy of this approach. We have this very direct, very clear, direct recognition of the fundamental nature of our mind, of the fundamental nature of reality. And so when I first tried this for myself, when I first took a short moment of just relaxing everything, allowing everything to be as it is, all of the descriptions, all of my thoughts, all of my emotions, all of my physical sensations, whatever the experience was that was going on, and you can, you can do this right now, and just to allow that to be however it is, without trying to change it, without trying to do anything with it, just allowing it to settle in its own place. Then in that moment of just complete openness, this intelligence becomes obvious. Now previously I had trained myself to focus completely and solely on all of the descriptions. And in the Balance View training we call all of those descriptions data. So we don't need to divide them up into different kinds of experience. We don't need to have lots of complicated descriptive frameworks. We have data shining forth and known by open intelligence. This keeps it so simple. It allows me to recognise the fundamental nature of my experience, whatever's going on. So wherever I am, whatever I'm thinking, whoever I'm with, whatever I'm feeling, I have the same opportunity to allow that data stream to flow on by and to recognise the opening intelligence that is at its basis. Every moment is exactly the same in, it, in that it has this same potential. I can either focus in on all of the data, the descriptions, and manage my life in a way that refers to all of these ideas I have about what they mean and what I need to do about them. And often that means avoiding descriptions that I've decided are negative, like sadness and trying to accumulate or hold on to descriptions that I've decided are, p are positive, like happiness. And this, if you like, is the conventional approach to life. Trying to manage my circumstances so I don't feel sadness or I minimise the sadness, and so I maximise and try and arrange my circumstances so I feel as happy as possible. And this is, my, this is what I tried for, for, for many, many years. And probably like many of you, I became quite skillful at that. You know, working out, okay, well, what, what is it that makes me happy? You know, how can I bring about this feeling of happiness? Because that's, that's, that's really good. You know, what, 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 what is it that makes me sad? You know, and how, how do I avoid those situations? How do I avoid those experiences in life that bring up this, this thing called sadness, which obviously I shouldn't be feeling? And that's the way that I approach life. But no matter how skillful I got at that, no matter how carefully I tried to rearrange everything that was going on, and I tried to structure my life and my relationships, there's no way that I could hold on to the happiness, and there's no way that I could keep the sadness at bay. 
and that became quite frustrating. And I thought, okay, well, I need to work harder. You know, I obviously need to refine my ideas about what I need. You know, I need to create even more skillfully this set of circumstances that somehow is going to make me happy. And then they have this happiness as a continual experience. But it just never came about. It never happened. And when the happiness was there, there was this slight sense of fear because I knew it wasn't going to last. And so instead here, we are trying a new approach of allowing the descriptions to be however they are. So when you're feeling sad, rather than desperately trying to do something about it, you allow it to be exactly as it is. Now for me this was absolutely radical, because for the whole of my 35 years before I met this training, I had never done that. Not once in my life. So when something like sadness had come up, then often my approach had been very analytical, very rational, trying to work out why I'm sad, what, what, what's making me feel sad, and then trying to work out how can I avoid this feeling, what needs to change. Maybe I need to go somewhere else, maybe I need to leave Arambol because I'm, I'm feeling sad and it's, I'm, I'm in Arambol, so that's obviously the cause of it. I'd go somewhere else and I'd feel happy for a bit, and then guess what? I'd feel sad or lonely or depressed or angry or irritated or one of these really negative descriptions. Okay, so it's obviously Delhi that's making me angry and irritated. I need to go back to Arambol now. And it just became this really complicated game of constantly being on the move. Because wherever I was, there were these descriptions that came up that were telling me, it seemed, that there was something wrong. And for the first time in my life, I was given this instruction of just allowing those things to be exactly as they are, just for a short moment and see what happens. And when I began to do this, it was incredible because these things that had seemed so powerful, that seemed to have such a grip and a control over me, were actually seen to be this brilliant shining forth of open intelligence and its dynamic energy. And it was only by allowing them to be as they were that I saw that I could actually face them that I didn't have to run away from all of these things. And I saw so clearly the way that I had been behaving as if I was a victim to these, these different data streams for the whole of my life. I'd been a complete victim to them, allowing them to push me around, allowing them to control the way that I was in the world, allowing them to send me on this, this chase around the globe, looking for this sense of peace and well-being and happiness and satisfaction. But actually I was on this endless hamster wheel of just continually running faster and faster, thinking, okay, well, it's not quite right now, so I need to run faster. That's where my solution lies. And instead I saw I could just step off that hamster wheel and allow all of this stuff just to do whatever it was doing. And um, it was amazing to discover that there was this sense of stability, this sense of okayness, this sense of ease that was always accessible. And so that was the first benefit that I felt. This was the first evidence of the, the power and efficacy of this simple instruction of taking short moments of relying on open intelligence whenever I naturally remembered. There was this immediate sense of relief, this immediate sense of benefit, an immediate sense of stability. And what was even more interesting was that when I, when I did do this, it was seen that my intelligence was always opening, always expanding, that all of this flow of data was this ceaseless flow of potency, of potent benefit. And when I relaxed my mind and allowed this data just to flow on by, then I could see everything clearly. So rather than being at the bottom of a valley and this valley of complicated descriptions and ideas and hopes and fears and complicated analysis of what the situation was and what it meant, 
Instead, it was like being on the top of a mountain. And I could see everything clearly. I could see my own behaviour very, very clearly. The way that I'd been trying to manage my life. And seeing this was actually a, a mixture of, of, of sadness and humour. You know, sadness at what I'd been doing to myself and humour at seeing how ridiculous this way of going about life was. And also this sense of really seeing that I'm not prepared to live my life like that anymore. I'm really not. And the, the, analyst, the, anal the analysis and the rationalisation was, was hilarious. Um, now when this happens, when you feel something or you think something, and then you try and work out why it's there, and sometimes this happens so quickly, you know, it, it just, it's like an automatic response. And just to allow that to be exactly as it is too is fine. And I, I make myself laugh with these ridiculous stories that just come up in my mind stream, trying to explain away what's going on. And more often than not, my descriptions and stories about what's going on and why somebody said something or why somebody didn't say something or you know, why something happened bear no resemblance at all to what is actually going on. And I'm living this world of complete fantasy. And when I rely on open intelligence and I rely on the support of the Four Mainstays, which is the support network in Balanced View, then I align myself with reality as it actually is, seeing everything clearly, crystal clear. Your mind is completely clear and wide open like a cloudless sky. And this is what you can rely on, this is what is dependable, this is what is constant. The data, the content are continually changing. The power to know your basic cognizance is the constant throughout all of your experience. So to try and base your sense of satisfaction and happiness on the continually changing data just doesn't make any sense. It's like trying to build a house on, on the foundation of, of, of shifting sand. There's no solidity there, there's no stability. And yet when you start to rely on open intelligence for short moments, then you discover what is completely dependable, what is always reliable, because open intelligence is always on. There's no on switch and no off switch. It's always on. Inseparable from whatever you are thinking right here and now. So the data, these are where you discover open intelligence. It's not about getting rid of your sadness so that you can rely on open intelligence. It's about allowing the sadness to be as it is so that you can recognize open intelligence shining forth as sadness. And there is the relief in the direct perception, in the immediate perception of everything exactly as it really is. This is such a powerful way to live. You give up this right to be a victim and you become a complete master. Completely empowered to to live your life in a way that is of benefit to yourself and other people. What I saw for myself was this um, complete self-focus and self-concern just naturally opened out into a far more expansive kind of intelligence, far more comprehensive, that included myself, but wasn't limited to these very narrow, very constricting definitions and ideas and limitations about who I thought I was. I haven't had to change anything about myself. All of it is seen to be already completely relaxed and completely perfect, just as it is. But at the same time, none of these old, tired definitions are seen to have the grip that they thought they had. If my mind is always pristine and clear, it's always pristine and clear. And this is what I began to discover and the support that I received in this training made that possible. The arrogance and pride of thinking that I could do it on my own was something that um, I'm very familiar with. And I certainly was 
so full of that arrogance and pride that when I came to this training, that was my approach. There was, there, I thought there were some brilliant things being expressed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those away and I'm going to utilize those on my own. And so that's what I tried. And I had some success. But there were things that still completely took me down. There were things where I was totally unable to recognize the open intelligence shining forth within that particular data stream. And so to see that when I began to ask for support, when I began to write to a trainer, participate in trainings and spend time with the community, everything got so much easier. I saw that I didn't have anything to prove. It wasn't me against the world. It was me with the world. We're all in this together. We're all this opening intelligence expressing this beneficial potency. And when I began to recognize that, it just didn't make any sense. Why on earth would I want to do it on my own? I'm not on my own. We're all in this together, intimately connected. So thank you all so much for being here and just, just for showing up. You know, it really is incredible what we're all doing here. You know, do not underestimate the power of what is being offered here and the, and the empowering importance of your contribution. Even if you haven't understood a word just by showing up, that's a huge step.